Brian Reagan, the founding partner of HTXL. Okay, so today we're going to look at a microeconomic question that is very likely to show up in your mock exams this year because this is a recent question that sh a similar question showed up on the most recent IB exam. Okay, so this is why I believe that this question has a high chance of showing up in your mock exams. Okay, so this is a very typical question um, that I'm going to teach you to do. Okay, and um, by the way, HCXL team, we've developed a new question bank series that includes all the mark schemes and all the uh, IB mock exam questions that we created. Okay, so if you're interested in this, you can fill in the form below. Okay, it will include the mark schemes, the most recent IB question types for econ, chem, math, and biology. Okay, but today in this video, I'm going to teach you how to do this particular IB micro question that is, I, I believe, is highly likely going to show up. Okay, but if you want more questions, download the link below. Anyways, okay, let's focus on this question. Explain why demerit good, such as cigarettes, lead to market failure, okay? So obviously the first thing we want to do to answer a 10-mark question is to have definitions, okay? So defin we define demerit good and market failure. Demerit good are basically goods with negative consumption externalities, right? Market failure is when a free market fails to allocate resources efficiently. Okay, so write these definitions in the first paragraph. Okay, actually, you should also define uh, negative consumption externalities. Okay, so what are negative consumption externalities? It's just basically um, negative effects on third parties from a person's, from the consumption of a good. Okay, so the keyword here is third parties. Negative effect on third parties from the consumption of a good. Okay, so then we should talk about the case for cigarettes in particular. So cigarettes have negative consumption externalities. What does these include? So for example, including uh, secondhand smoking, because obviously when, when somebody smokes, um, it creates, like somebody would smoke and would have sex, would suffer from secondhand smoking, right? And that is a negative externality. And extra healthcare costs for society, right? Because obviously smoking reduce, reduces the health of a population, which increases the healthcare cost for society. This is a kind of negative externality, okay? So then the diagram you should draw is this one, the typical negative consumption externality diagram, okay? And then, so how do we explain this diagram? It's actually very typical. First, you can say the MPB is higher than the MSB because of the negative externality, okay? Because there are negative externality, the private benefit is greater than the social benefit, okay? Private benefit is referring to the benefit to the consumer. Social benefit is the benefit to society. So it's because cigarettes have negative effects for other people, right? So that's why the benefit for the person smoking is actually more than the benefit for society as a whole. Because, because you can think of it like, because smoking actually have harms other people, right? So that's why for society, the benefit for society is less than the benefit for the individual because, um, yeah, I already explained it. Okay, so the market equilibrium is, the next point is that the market equilibrium is here, okay, P and Q. Why? Because the market equilibrium is basically where demand equals supply. Simple, right? So that's why it's P and Q. That's where demand equals supply. The MPB equals MPC. Okay, but the socially optimum point is where MSC equals MSC, right? MSB equals MSC. That's the socially optimum point. Q opt and Q opt. So you can see there's overconsumption of cigarettes by Q opt to Q because the socially optimum point is Q opt, but the equilibrium is at Q. So the equilibrium quantity is greater than the socially optimum quantity, right? So that's why we can say that uh, cigarettes are being overconsumed. So next, lastly, hence there's a welfare loss in uh, in the market of cigarettes. Why? Because look, between Q, so you can see Q opt to Q, these units are actually being overconsumed, right? These units are overconsumed. And between Q up and Q, we can see the MSC is higher than the MSB. The MSC is the blue curve here. Look at my mouse. But the MSB is the pink curve here. Look at my mouse, right? So you can see the MSC is higher than the MSB. So that means for, for each unit from Q up to Q, there's a welfare loss incurred, right? For every unit that are being produced from Q up to Q, this cost for society is greater than the benefit for society. That's why. The total welfare loss is this triangular area because for each unit there's a welfare loss and therefore this triangular area is the total welfare loss. Okay, so that's really the all the key things you need to say for part A. Okay, and you can give a real life example as well. So for example, you can say 
uh, like for example, the cigarette market in Hong Kong uh, is an example of a market failure. And this is why the government have imposed policies such as indirect tax and negative and advertisement against smoking, right? Okay, the evaluation part of this question, the part B of this question, okay? So the part B of this question says, evaluate the policy of indirect tax to correct market failure, okay? So first step, let's re recall the definition of indirect tax. Indirect tax refers to a tax on expenditure, right? For example, a $5 tax on each package of cigarette, okay? So basically, indirect tax can be used to solve two cases of market failure. The first, so you can write this in your answer. The first, indirect tax can be used by used to correct market failure caused by negative consumption externalities. So you can see this diagram we have looked at just now, actually, right? The market equilibrium Q1 is greater than the socially optimum point. By imposing indirect tax, it can shift the supply curve upwards. And you can see in this case, it, it can it will bring the market equilibrium quantity to Q star, right? Initially, the market equilibrium quantity is here. Look at my mouse. And then after the tax, the market equilibrium quantity goes to here, right? So you can see the market equilibrium quantity is actually now at Q opt, right? So this is how it can correct market failure for negative consumption externality. For example, many countries impose a, a indirect tax for cigarettes because it has negative consumption externalities. But not only ne negative consumption externalities, even negative production externalities. So what are some examples of negative production externality? For example, uh, factory pollution, right? If a, for example, if a factory creates a lot of pollution, it is actually an example of negative production externality. So you can see, because of the negative production externality, the MSC is higher than the MPC. The cost to society is greater. So MSC refers to the cost to society, right? So how, how, how much does this production activity cost for society? And the MPC refers to the cost to the producer only. So because this, so the negative product, if, 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 for example, in factory pollution, it has a lot of external costs. For example, pollution will, will have a negative impact on people's health, right? So it has a lot of negative costs for society. And because of these negative externalities, the MSC is greater than, greater than the MPC. Remember, the difference between MSC and MPC is the negative externality per unit, right? Keep that in mind, <clears throat> okay? So, they, by imposing indirect tax, you can shift the MPC up. So you can see, as the MPC shift up, the market equilibrium quantity would go from Q1 to Q2. There's the reduction in equilibrium quantity, right? So now the market equilibrium quantity is actually closer to the socially optimum quantity at Q star, right? Okay, so this is how it can help to correct market failure. Okay, so then we let's we, we go to the evaluation part. So basically, we talk about the advantages and disadvantages of this indirect tax. The main advantage is that it can generate government tax revenue, right? So you can talk about how this government tax revenue can be used to find to can be spent on, for example, public goods or merit to subsidize merit goods such as education. And then the other advantage is that we have explained above. It can reduce the market equilibrium quantity and bring it closer to the socially optimum quantity, right? It can reduce the equilibrium quantity. It will become closer to the socially optimal. Okay. What about the disadvantages? Well, number one, you can say if the PED is low, if the PED is low, what happens if you impose an indirect tax? The price will increase, but then there will only be a small reduction in quantity demand because the consumers are not responsive to price changes, right? So that's why, although the price will rise, there will, there's a small reduction in quantity demand. So, for so this for an example would be cigarettes. A lot of countries impose uh, indirect tax on cigarettes. However, the disadvantage is that oftentimes the the uh, cigarette indirect tax is ineffective in discouraging smoking because cigarettes have a price inelastic demand. So this is why even though the the quantity demand does decrease after an indirect tax, it does not decrease significantly because cigarettes is price inelastic. So there will only be a small reduction in quantity demand. <clears throat> the second point is this. Look, at both of these diagrams, let's use the production one as an example. In order for the market so let's say if we impose a tax and want to bring it to the socially optimum point, actually the amount of tax have to equal to the negative externality, right? Look, the distance between MPC and MSC is the negative production externality, right? So in order for the new MPC curve after tax, in order for the MPC, 
So if we want to eliminate the welfare loss, the MPC plus tax curve must become equal to the MSC. So the MPC curve must shift to and become the same as the MSC curve after tax, right? So that's why the tax has to be equal to the negative externality in order for the market equilibrium to be to reach the socially optimum point. Okay, so but the problem here is that it's very difficult to measure the negative externality, right? It's like if we want to measure the negative externality of smoking, it's very it's nearly impossible to quantify. So this is why it's very difficult to impose the right amount of tax to bring the market equilibrium to the socially optimum quantity. Get it? It's because it's hard to estimate the value of the externality. So yeah, this is the limitation of the indirect tax. The second one is that indirect tax is going to increase the market equilibrium price, right? So this will have a negative impact on consumers. So it will decrease the disposable income of the consumers. And another thing is that, look, after the indirect tax, the producers will earn less revenue because, look, they will, for example, in this diagram, after the indirect tax, they will sell a smaller quantity. The producers will sell a smaller quantity and the price that producers receive will be lower because they need to pay the tax, right? So although the price, equilibrium price here is at P2, if you reduce the tax, actually it's somewhere here at P3, okay? So producers would receive a lower price and sell a lo lower quantity compared to before when you impose an indirect tax. And this is why, um, and this is why the, uh, this is why it will reduce the producer's revenue and it can lead to unemployment, okay? So how about the conclusion? So the evaluation, in your conclusion, you can say the effectiveness of the indirect tax depends on the PED. If the PED is low, the indirect tax is going to be less effective, okay? And, but another thing you can say, it's, a, it's hard to rely on indirect tax alone to completely eliminate the welfare loss and to correct the market failure because it's the reason for this is because it's difficult to measure the value of the externality that's why it's difficult to, in, to impose the right amount of indirect tax okay so i hope you find that this video is useful if you want more question banks and mark schemes you can fill in the form below okay this is made by our expert team and it includes all of the most recent ib question types okay another thing is if you want free to if you want to have a free trial on our tutorial platform you can go on our website it's all below okay just refer to the description below to get more free resources